Good morning and welcome to Sabbath School today as we explore this lesson we're asking for God to guide us in the blessings of the principles of the 1888 message. Dear Father in heaven, please lead us into the wisdom that only the Holy Spirit can teach us. In the Savior's name, amen. Lesson number six, worship the Creator. So we begin by asking the question, how is worship and how we treat the poor connected to the 1888 message? Let's begin by thinking about the prophet Isaiah who was known around his nation for his very strident pronouncements and his claims to speak on behalf of God. He certainly caught the people's attention when he arrived at the temple and his proclamations echoed around the city like a trumpet blast. He had a message from God. But the people missed it, frustrated that their recent faithfulness had gone unnoticed. They said, we have fasted before you, God, why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice it, Isaiah 58, verse 3. And so Isaiah reported that God had noticed their efforts to catch his attention, but God was not impressed. Their hard spiritual work was noted, but God did not appreciate it. Their religious endeavors were somehow missing the mark of what God longed to see in his people. Speaking through Isaiah, this is how God responds to his people in search of revival. He says, the kind of worship I want from you is to serve those who need your help. Help people be released from the things that hold them back. Help them live as freely as possible. Feed the hungry. Provide shelter to the homeless and those who need it. Share clothes with those who don't have enough. You can see all of this in Isaiah 58, 6 and 7. Even if we have only a little, it might be more than someone else has, and God calls on us to be generous with our resources we have to those who need help. Such service is not merely a nice thing to do. These verses describe it as a way to worship God. It is not the only way to worship, but speaking through Isaiah to his revival-focused people, God urged them to try this seemingly different approach to worship. In God's view, it seems this form of worship might be preferable to some of the people's more traditional worship practices, especially if that worship is conducted while ignoring the needs of others. In the words of Amos, following his assessment of worship, which we quote, he says, Isaiah 5:24. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. This kind of worship is something that flows outward. Worship is not inwardly focused, but something that brings a blessing to all those around the worshipers of God. It's remarkable that the spirit of Jesus and the heart of, and the heart of faithfulness to God are so other-focused that even our spiritual renewal is not about us. Reaching out instead to the poor, the oppressed, the hurting, and the hungry. The true purpose of religion is to release men from their burdens of sin, to eliminate intolerance and oppression, and to promote justice, liberty, and peace. And so in Isaiah 58, 8 through 12, God promises blessings in response to this form of worship. God is saying that if the people were less focused on themselves, they would find God working with them and through them to bring healing and restoration. This was the revival the people were seeking, a renewal of their hope and purpose as found in God with a real sense of his presence in their lives and community. Then your salvation will come like the dawn, and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. And then when you call, the Lord will answer, Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply, Isaiah 58, 8 and 9. Let's, be, let's end with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the cry of the prophets who you inspired to have a clear-cut understanding of how to worship God 
It involved not just inward worship, but expressing care and concern and helpfulness, practical helpfulness to others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.